Japan is renowned for its impressive engineering achievements, often considered as the land of marvels. The country boasts skyscrapers designed to withstand powerful earthquakes, and its trains are known for their exceptional punctuality. Notable engineering feats such as the Tokyo Skytree, Akashi Kaikyo Bridge, and Takedo Shinkansen were successfully completed without major setbacks. However, not every engineering endeavor in Japan goes according to plan, as exemplified by the Kansai International Airport, which has become one of the nation's most significant engineering disasters. With an estimated cost of $20 billion, the airport is gradually sinking into Osaka Bay, necessitating substantial expenditures of $12 billion in attempts to salvage it. Let's delve into the reasons behind the airport sinking and explore the measures being taken to resolve this issue. The Kansai International Airport has an interesting aspect, it was actually designed to sink. However, the sinking is occurring at a much faster rate than initially anticipated. The crucial question remains, will the airport settle at a height sufficient to avoid significant flooding? Only time will provide the answer. Currently, only temporary measures are being employed to keep the airport afloat in Osaka Bay. Before delving into these measures, let's explore how the airport was constructed. Construction of the Kansai International Airport commenced in 1987 with an initial projected cost of $8 billion. However, due to extensive repairs, the total cost has escalated to $20 billion. Ironically, the Ministry of Transportation in Japan decided to build the airport in Osaka Bay to avoid the higher costs associated with constructing it inland. Relocating and compensating residents, along with moving factories and businesses, would have incurred substantial expenses. Additionally, there were environmental concerns. Unfortunately, at that time, they couldn't foresee the greater costs that would arise from a sinking airport. To build the airport, construction workers had to create an artificial island through land reclamation. Land reclamation had gained momentum in Japan after World War II, so the concept of building on water was not entirely new. The process involved laying sand over the clay seabed. Subsequently, 2.2 million vertical pipes, each with a 16-inch diameter, were installed. These pipes were driven into the seabed and filled with moisture-absorbing sand, as a stable and dry foundation was necessary to support the weight of an airport terminal. After removing the pipes and implementing the sand drain method, rock and soil were added to the sand layer. Approximately 180 million cubic meters of rock and soil were brought in from nearby mountain ranges to reinforce the foundation. To protect the island, a sea wall was constructed using 48,000 specially designed concrete tetrapods, with an additional 69 large steel chambers forming the perimeter of the sea wall. The tetrapods were placed between these chambers to dissipate oncoming waves and surges, preventing flooding. Without the sea wall, the airport would be vulnerable to inundation from Osaka Bay. More soil was added until the island reached a height of 65 feet above sea level. However, it turned out that the island should have been built even higher, as engineers vastly underestimated the extent of sinking that would occur across the 511 hectare landmass. Once the island was stabilized, construction crews began working on the terminal and runway in 1990. A three-kilometer bridge was built to connect the island to the commercial development of Rinku Town. The bridge connecting the airport to Osaka was a substantial investment, costing approximately $1 billion. The first terminal was opened in 1994, but financial difficulties soon emerged. The airport found itself in significant debt following the completion of the first terminal and runway. In the initial years of operation, annual interest payments reached as high as $560 million. The main terminal building of the Kansai International Airport was designed by the renowned Italian architect Renzo Piano who was chosen for his unique vision. However, there were challenges during the design phase. Government officials wanted to reduce the terminal's length to save money, but Piano insisted on constructing it according to the original specifications. As a result, the terminal stretches 1.7 kilometers, making it the longest in the world. Without Piano's perseverance, the terminal would have looked quite different if last-minute changes were made. So, while the sinking of the Kansai International Airport was indeed part of its design, the rapid rate of sinking has posed unforeseen challenges. The airport's future and its vulnerability to flooding depend on whether it will settle at a sufficient height above sea level. Currently, temporary measures are in place to keep the airport operational in Osaka Bay. Despite the significant sinking of the first island, engineers believed they had the situation under control and proceeded with the construction of a second terminal and runway in 2003. 
A second island was built using the same process as the first, but this time engineers adjusted their measurements, taking into account the anticipated sinking. Recognizing the need for expansion due to the exponential growth of tourism in Japan, as well as the congestion at Narita and Haneda airports in Tokyo, the Ministry of Transportation aimed to position Kansai International Airport as a gateway to Asia. They wanted to ensure that customers wouldn't choose airports in Hong Kong or South Korea over Kansai. The sinking of Kansai International Airport is primarily attributed to the underestimation of the speed and depth at which the airport's island would sink. Engineers initially estimated that the first island would sink between 19 to 25 feet. However, they used the lower end of their estimates, which proved to be inadequate. Since its opening, the airport has already sunk 38 feet. The engineers' expectation was that the islands would gradually settle over a period of 50 years and stabilize at an elevation of 13 feet above sea level. This elevation was considered the minimum required to prevent significant flooding. However, by the year 2000, parts of the airport's first island had already sunk to just 13 feet above sea level, much earlier than anticipated. Subsequently, engineers revised their calculations and now predict that the airport will sink an additional 13 feet, reaching sea level by 2056. To mitigate this issue, over $150 million has been invested in strengthening and raising the sea wall around the airport to prevent further sinking and potential flooding. In addition to raising the sea wall, engineers have implemented other temporary measures to prevent the sinking of Kansai International Airport. In 1999, as the first island had already sunk 27 feet instead of the estimated 19 feet, engineers took action to slow down the sinking. They excavated the ground beneath the passenger terminal and inserted a series of iron plates directly below the hydraulic jacks and the 900-column foundation. The columns of the foundation were then raised in stages, significantly reducing the sinking rate. However, these measures came at a considerable cost. The total cost of building Kansai International Airport had already reached $15 billion, making it the most expensive civic work project in history. While the airport is not expected to sink into Osaka Bay in the near future, the sinking issue is far from resolved. The hydraulic jacks beneath the airport require regular adjustments every two years, and meters have been installed on the columns to monitor the airport's tilt. If the corrective measures fail and the airport begins sinking at an accelerated pace, it may ultimately need to be abandoned, and a new international airport would have to be built in the Kansai region. Climate change poses an additional threat to the airport. In 2018, Typhoon Jebi struck the area, causing severe damage. The airport had to suspend operations as seawater surges inundated the island, resulting in flooded runways and water reaching the engines of some planes. On a related note, Japan has a rail line called the Hokkaido Shinkansen, which is actually designed to be underwater. The bullet train connects Japan's two largest islands, Honshu and Hokkaido, passing through the $7 billion Saiken Tunnel under the Tsugaru Strait. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned to this channel for more informative videos.